Russia is heavily involved in German politics and it just led to massive consequences for all of Central and Eastern Europe. According to sensitive documents obtained by European intelligence, the Kremlin continues to use its money to engineer German public opinion, election results and policy. These are probably the only three things Germans aren't able to engineer themselves, along with a low-emissions Volkswagen. So what is the extent of the Russian involvement? What is the solution to the current crisis it begot? And how come Germans allow themselves to be puppeteered like that? Welcome to the last show where we bring you an Eastern European perspective on current news. Russia has always been interested in Germany more than in any other European country. A key part of their legendary pipe dream plan to conquer Europe, which very much sets the policy right now in the Kremlin, counts on a German partnership. No shit, said Poland. Where have we heard that before? So Russians have been trying to maintain influence on German politics for ages. And they've already had some massive long-term success, which we're gonna discuss later. But right now, with the troubles they got from their dumbass invasion, they have taken their gloves off. And we're learning about how much they're directly meddling in all things German. According to sensitive Russian documents obtained by an European intelligence agency, the Kremlin is trying to engineer German public opinion and German election results to be sympathetic to Russia and hostile to Ukraine and its Western allies. The documents reportedly reveal how Kremlin officials are working to bring together two very unlikely bedfellows, Germany's far right party known as the AFD and Germany's extreme left party known as the Linke. That is the genius of the Russian strategy. They have no ideological stake in the game, and so they funnel cash to both the AFD far right party and the d linke far left. As long as they do anti-war marches and tow the obligatory Ukraine is Nazis and we just have to stop sending weapons line. Now it might sound a bit reassuring that they have influence over the fringe parties and not the Bundeskanzler Olaf Scholz himself. Seen here as the answer to the question what if Smeagol became a Bible salesman? However, the unlikely alliance of the far right with the far left would be getting about the same amount of votes as Scholz's ruling Social Democrats. Now, say what you will about the Eastern European countries. Like, we're a bunch of poor, depressed alcoholics whose only goal in life is to do better than their even poorer, drunker neighbor. But we have been warning Germans about this for years. Because the one thing we're good at is being suspicious, particularly about Russians and Germans. It's part of our nature. One key aspect we have been warning them about is energy security. Both we and Americans have been telling them not to build their dumbass Nord Stream and not to take out their nuclear power plants. The main goal of the German Green Movement, which has also been found to be financed by the Russians. Putin has been supporting German environmentalists in their fight to cancel nuclear energy in order to make Germany more dependent on Russian gas and oil. Even though most scientists are now hailing modern nuclear energy as the way towards a cleaner and safer environment. Even goddamn Greta Thunberg is on board and we know this is a Russian plan. Last week, Germany still took out their last remaining nuclear power plants. And, given that wind and solar just won't do it yet, they've had to switch back to using more coal. Yes, coal. They're fighting for the environment by burning more coal. That's like fighting for animal rights by running a slaughterhouse. This is happening while Europe is in the middle of an energy crisis, because it feels bad to be heating your home with Russian gas, while Russians are heating Ukrainian homes with S-300 rockets. This was the dumbest move that Germany has ever made. All right, close second. Probably third. God damn, for such an intelligent and prosperous nation, you guys sure fuck up a lot. Let us know in the comments which German fuck up is your favorite. However, there is a solution to this. Germans just have to start listening to Eastern Europeans. Yes, we're like your 
deadbeat brothers always asking you for cash, then spending it all on tracksuits and booze, and ending up on the street anyway. But you get street smart on the street, and you learn who to trust and who not to, which sounds like something you need right now. However, in order to find some solutions for the current energy problems, which we and Americans have been warning Germans about, I'm joined right now by our special American correspondent, Jeff Cook. So Jeff, you Americans are all about power. So can you give us any ideas how Germany might get some power right now? Absolutely, Dominic. And first of all, thank you very much for having me. No, it's great to have you. Yeah. Power comes in many different uh, places. Uh, the one thing that I would suggest that the Germans could begin trying to do is using power banks that you order off of Amazon, the power banks that you might normally use to charge a phone or a, perhaps a tablet or any small electronic device. They usually hold a decent charge and you can get a lot of use out of just one. Right. Um, how many of these power banks do you think it would take to keep Volkswagen factory working for a day? Oh, that's an excellent question, Dominic, and I understand that you're implying that it would take a lot. Uh, I estimate that it would be between 20 and 30 power banks to run a Volkswagen plant. Hmm, what data set are you basing this on? I'm just doing math in my head. Hmm. I also have two other choices, uh, options, if you will. Uh, one would be the burning of uh, historical books that are no longer historically significant. I'm talking about Karl Marx, of course, and the man with the Kampf. Hmm, I think you're gonna get a lot of support in Eastern Europe for burning these two books because we had some fun with them in the past and like all, all fun must end at some point. Eastern so Europe and America would be happy to supply all of those books oh because nobody's super happy with them right now. Burn hmm. those books, spin those turbines and supply power to the VW plant that you just mentioned, or for more power banks. I think that's brilliant. Can we come up with one more idea? And ideally, some that doesn't involve burning things because that's part of the problem. Right well, now. I did come planned with another burning plan, but mm -hmm. uh, let's brainstorm for a second. Uh, what else supplies power? Mm, marches? Similarly, I'm talking no, that's about... White power. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Well, white power is also very flammable. But I'm talking about power moving forward and marching, that kind of energy that can be generated by a human. A la Especially black a German. Like, they'll nail the shit out of marching. You have to give them that. Black mirror. Hmm. Ride the bicycle. Oh, the series, the episode. Black the mirror. Dystopic future dystopic future, but a bright future. A bright future. Powered by the people, the Volkswagen people, the people's wagon. People's wagon. Riding the bikes, supplying the power. Right. For a better future, a better tomorrow. Yeah, 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 it all makes sense, man. That's, I think that's a great option. And especially the Germans riding bicycles to generate power and burning Karl Marx, like you're gonna get a lot of support for that in Eastern Europe. I say you combine those three things. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for having me. This has been The Last Show with your host, Jeff Cook. Uh, that's not entirely accurate, but see you soon. Check out some of these other videos.